Our fourth lecture in the severe weather section of the course is about tropical storms and hurricanes. and It comes from chapter 12, pages 352 to 374. All right, lots of good introductory material here about hurricanes and tropical storms and uh, their impact. It's going to be a, a good, good lecture, I think. All right, I want to draw your attention here to the differences between uh, typhoons, cyclones, and hurricanes. Now, the book is going to be clear about this, but let's just be clear about it too. They're, those are just different words used in different parts of the world to describe the same kind of storm. And we're going to use the word hurricane because that's the term that we typically use in the United States. But if you hear about a typhoon uh, affecting China or something like that, it's the same kind of storm. In fact, that picture, the map at the bottom of page 354 helps uh, explain where uh, hurricanes happen, and I think that's an important picture. Um, there's a complicated table on 355 that shows all the different hurricane basins and how many hurricanes and how many tropical storms and so on happen. Uh, the only numbers you need to know are those for the Atlantic and for the Western Pacific because the Atlantic are the ones that are going to affect the United States and Western Pacific is the most active hurricane basin. So know those fact figures but the rest of it is more just for your interest. I really like the picture at the top of 365, I'm sorry, 356, that shows the structure of a hurricane much better than anything I could have drawn. Notice how the low-level circulation is cyclonic and the upper-level circulation is anticyclonic. Uh, these pictures on 357 are uh, nice diagrams showing what the structure of a hurricane is like. I, 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 again, I couldn't draw it as well as they show it here, and we'll be using these figures in class. Uh, again, there's some videos here that are also on your textbook CD and on your course CD, I copied them as well, that show different structures within a hurricane and things like the eye and the eye wall. And, um, you know, there's, there's some real detailed stuff here about some of the uh, fancy structures that can be seen in a hurricane like double eye walls and hot towers. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, similarly, over here, when we start learning about hurricane formation, uh, they're going to be talking about hurricanes all the way back to where the original disturbance formed off the coast of Africa. Uh, that's actually very interesting stuff, uh, especially to me as a tropical meteorologist, but it's beyond the scope of the class. We can't, I mean, if we, and then we could follow them back over land over Africa, and we could follow them back to the, the highlands of Sudan, and, uh, you know, where do you stop? So we're not going to worry about the details of this African meteorology stuff. Uh, on the other hand, we are going to worry about the different kinds of ingredients you need in order to make a hurricane. This terminology, ingredients, kind of turns students off sometimes, but it's actually ingredient-based science is kind of this idea of you need these things in order to have whatever it is. They're all necessary ingredients. Um, you know, you, you, you need to have flour and sugar and milk and eggs to have a cake and if you skip the flour it's not a cake in the same way you have to have all these ingredients to make a hurricane if you skip well, if you don't have them all it isn't like you get a weaker hurricane you don't get a hurricane so for example our first ingredient is going to be high sea surface temperatures another ingredient is going to be the Coriolis force another one is going to be unstable conditions in the mid troposphere and there's going to be about three or four more ingredients that we're going to discuss in class that the book just sort of mentions parenthetically. That's going to be an important thing. It's going to be important as to how we forecast hurricanes. It's going to be important for lots of reasons. So make sure you know the ingredients that make a hurricane. I circled the area here in the book about hurricane tracks. There's always questions about hurricane tracks on the test. Uh, not, not necessarily a lot, but a one or two, and you want those points, so make sure you read that. Uh, and what happens to hurricanes on landfall, also very important. Uh, by the way, this figure on page 366 just goes back with that business of tracks, and it'll be very, uh, not, to be, not to give you just too strong of a hint about what's on the test, but I would, I would study this picture. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> okay, uh, boy, the hurricane seasons of 2004 and 2005 broke all the records, and the book loves to talk about them, and I love to talk about them too, but I don't know if we'll have time. Uh, and it can be kind of specific information, but it certainly is very interesting to read, but I, I'm not going to test you on what you see in that text box. Uh, the next page is just a continuation of that as well. And finally, we're going to learn about the ways that hurricanes cause damage by their damaging winds, by their heavy rain, and by, well, to a lesser extent, they're tornadoes, but definitely they're storm surge. And there's, again, there's a video on your course CD and on your textbook CD about storm surge that it's just a short little thing with some disaster footage. And more disaster footage. And 
and uh, that's how come, what is that? Oh, that is how storm surge forms. Yeah, that's important. And that's it for that chapter, I believe. So um, it's a lot of material, actually, on hurricanes, but uh, it certainly is an important and an increasingly important topic in meteorology, especially uh, with its impacts on the southeast United States. So make sure you check on all this. If you have questions, let me know. This has been Dr. John Shruggy, copyright 2006.